Okay, so we are back, and for round seven, we are going to be spectating uh, one of the 5-1 matchups, because Yoel is already locked in for day two, as is Fino. Uh, Who would you like to see here, Lumi? Uh, we have Hype versus Life Coach. Ooh, Hype versus Life Coach. So that's our two players going uh, up against each oh, other. let's do it. Uh, but the game is, you know, already started a bit. We're in round two, but... Uh, the sad thing is, I think one of these players will will lose. That means they won't make top eight. And but the, I guess equally, the nice thing is that one of them will make it. So yeah, these are our two players queued into each other. <coughs> a couple turns deep into this game. Yep. Um, but we will see how this goes. So already, Life Coach has a pretty dominant lead. It looks like basically winning two lanes with a very powerful top heavy hand. Uh yes and no. Look at the gold, dude. Oh. The high pass, right? He has payday 18 well. gold and he has a payday. So, you know, obviously it's not looking good. Hero-wise for Hype, but I think he is able to do what his uh, deck wants to do. Absolutely. Which is double that gold and buy some kind of big items. You got to have this Debbie spawn right into this Sven. Okay. Uh, get that nice trade there. Life Coach will probably try to keep Sven alive, though, with his 14 gold. Yeah, there it is, Traveler's Cloak. Looks like Life Coach just picked up a Red Miss Maul as well. I uh, think that's actually a pretty good item, especially if you're playing a red deck. Yep. You know, you're, you're relying so much on dealing face damage, and if your red hero is blocked, like we saw in that crazy RNG game with, the, with cheating <laughs> death, sometimes you just need that final bit of extra punch. A little over the top yeah. to be able to deal damage even against the wall. Yeah, and Siege allows you to do that. It, anytime your your hero's blocked, uh, Siege allows you to Siege over, well, spill over, uh, you know. Exactly. Five damage. So Hyped is sitting on the Singleton Payday. He can cast that on either left or right, and doubling his gold up to 36 for next shop phase. Okay, the Goo's going to come down. Minus two armor on Debbie. Yep. Hyped is uh, probably just going to play the kind of slow game here. You could take the Payday here if you want to play another black card here, but uh, at the same time, I kind of like Smeevil Armaster on the right, unless you particularly want to cast one of these black cards on this lane. So I kind of like the idea of Paydaying from here. Yeah, it's not like you're missing out on too much gold, right? Uh... There is one creep trading on the mid lane, so you could get one extra gold that way. Comes for you. Yep. Uh, now, Red, mi Red Miss Maul coming down. Traveler's Cloak can keep Hyped's uh, Debbie this safe will come in handy. So, you guys have been watching Life Coach's deck uh, play two rounds in a row, right? How, how does the deck actually win? I didn't kind of get uh, too much so into it. It is basically a red green deck, very, very proactive. It's got one cheating death, which you love to see. Uh, and it's it, it mostly just tries to win the game like in the kind of mid-range area just by spamming value points. It does not really interact with Hype's board at all. Okay. Oh, there it is. Hype going to go up to 36. Yep. I'm a big fan of this pay down the left lane. Opens up Arm Master. Yep. Uh, I wonder if you can play Arm Master and hit Sven, which in this case is a 50-50. It does feel pretty good. I mean, you're never sad just giving any of your hero plus two attack, so... Yep. Sven, of course, has the Great Cleave, which means every point of attack he has yep. uh, can translate into extra cleave. And that's why it's good. Uh, you want you want to hit it on Sven. So at this point, it looks like Hyped has kind of given up the mid lane here, which is something you're often forced to do against the Bristleback. Yeah. It's a very, very scary <laughs> unit to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with in combat. No one I'm interesting to see... The, uh, I'm surprised to see the uh, creeping develop there. I thought that was a good turn to just spend all your mana... Oh, actually, he's on mana 5. I thought yes. it was mana 6 at this point. I need to get better glasses. No, it was on mana 6 for that yeah, lane. 6 for that lane. Yeah, he could have got strength, actually. Yeah, and we also have Smeevil Armaster being floated on Hyped's end here. Okay. Now, he does have initiative, but he doesn't have the mana to do something like a hit fire, no accidents on the Sven. Yep. And we're going to see Life Coach double deploy left. He's just going to try to rush this down. He knows mid's given up. We're going to see Hyped have to respond in kind. There it is. Yep. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> a little unsure there. Yeah. The sort of, it can't really go mid. I mean, at this point, the fight lane is just left lane. What's kind of scary, though, is this Tidehunter's Ravage ability. Not off cooldown yet, but in one turn. We have seen this before. We will see this again. The stun is going to come down yeah. on adjacent units. Uh, this will shut a how Hyped from the game. He needs this Helm of the Dominator, which he bought, to kind of bail him out here. Yeah. I know we're kind of kind of uh, laughing as the players are a little unsure, you know, putting the heroes left and right. I think personally that's probably the toughest part about Artifact, 
Yes. You put your hero in the wrong lane, you just straight up lose. Yeah, we, we saw that happen just like five minutes ago. And, yeah. Well, okay. We saw that almost happen. It didn't end up happening, but it was really looking like it was going to happen. Yeah, so I, I think players spending, you know, 30 seconds, even a minute on the deployment phase is definitely fine. We've got right. a very powerful card in Hyped's hand. Enough okay. magic. Yeah. i got to say, I do Please love this card. Uh, it's very red. Basically, just both players can't play any cards. Metal yeah. Wrong. It's also one of those few cards that actually just breaks the rule of the game in, in some way, right? Like, yeah. Normally, you have the you play a card, I play a card. This is no, 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 no. We're just doing things my way. Yeah. And this is just exactly, it fits red so well. This is just what red wants to do as a yeah. color. Just like nobody plays things. We just smash. Kind of awkward though when you're losing the smash. Debbie right now going <laughs> to die. Yeah. Uh, Sven kind of owning the Beast Master right now. But card that demands very precise timing. Yep. Now, Hyped is kind of relying on this Helm of the Dominator to get enough value because he's playing the gold game. Yep. But unfortunately for him, Life Coach isn't really playing big creeps that are great to mind control. Right now, it's just this melee creep. Well, taking away that melee creep means Sorla is punching a tower for 12. So and that's huge. That's uh, not, not worse. Not the worst. Of course, is that the best value to get? No, it's going to be clear the deck. That's a good one. Oh, that's not bad as well. He still has the option for Helm here. Uh, he will be not killing Sven if he does that. He loses the cleave. Takes the kill on Sven, saving Helm for a potential bigger drop. Life Coach does have uh, the Ogre Conscript as well as the Spring the Trap. Yeah. It feels so nice when you're able to just spring yeah. the trap onto the L lane because you don't need it for this lane anymore. You're, you're going to take the tower anyways. I, I like that call on Heights. Even though uh, Spring the Trap is one of, he knows that if Life Coach has it, he will play it here on this turn. So he can be a little bit patient with the Helm of the Dominator. And in this case, deal a 4 8 that's blocking Sorla instead. Yeah. So, kind of uh, very similar to most of the artifact games we've seen. You know, one player takes one lane, the other player takes another lane, and it's going to be a fight on the final lane. Um, and I got to say, uh, any kind of. Attrition fighting, having a Helmet Dominator on your oh, side, yes. you, you're winning out most of the time. I like the position Hyped is in right now. I mean, he's got initiative, left lane is going on, and he can actually kill both of Life Coach's heroes if he wants. He can hip fire the Farvran, and then with the initiative that the hip fire gives him, he can then proceed to immediately no accident the Tree and Protector. Yeah. Perfectly killing them both and locking Life Coach out of his mana. That is a very powerful play. And he has just enough mana to do and that. And then the Helm of the Dominator stealing the Centaur right in front of Sorla. This is an explosive turn for Hype. Let's see it. He sees this line of play. Yeah, he definitely does. Gonna make sure that he, you know, is not thinking about the other options as well. That is but so good. Hit go. fire. Steal initiative, and the treant goes with it. Helm of the Dominator, stealing the centaur. Yeah. Uh, and then you can even keep the Beastmaster alive with the Fountain Flask. This, this is the ideal turn. Yeah, so for you guys that haven't seen the Helm of the Dominator in action, it's a armor item. It costs 19 gold, so very hard to actually afford. Uh, but it does give your, your hero three armor and the ability to essentially mind control or take, take a creep. It, this really goes to show the power of initiative. Like, yep. if Life Coach had initiative here, th this turn goes completely different. Yeah, he would have been able to cast, for example, the, the card that you're highlighting, and all of his heroes stay alive. And, you know, completely different lane at that point. Yep. Hipfire, very powerful spell. And now it's up to Life Coach to kind of play on the defensive. Now he does have Tidehunter coming in next turn yes. with the Ravage. Oh, straight Ooh. up giving it up. Wow. Is he that a bit early of a concession? Yeah, not feeling good about his odds at all there. Okay. Well, that's game one. Ah, I mean, that turn was pretty nasty, I gotta say. <laughs> and now, because they're just sitting across from each other and talking about it. Yeah. Let's see if they're uh, going to be starting up their game. If not, we could always watch one of the other pairs going on right now. No, we, we want to stay on this. Yeah. I, I think people want to <laughs> watch this one. Uh, of course, we got uh, Blaze joining on the couch. What do you think about this game? Pretty interesting. Uh, surprised to see basic heroes doing so well. Mm. Uh, you know, you look at the the four heroes. You don't even have to draft. You think these should be terrible, right? Yeah. Well, what's what's Debbie doing winning games? Yeah. I mean, Debbie's really good when you're casting really strong black cards, yeah. right? I think uh, we saw a couple of paydays. We saw Oath. I think when you're also equipping your your Debbie with like 19 gold items. Yes. It's like pretty all right. So yeah, exactly. I think yeah. you actually see a lot of the like top level drafters kind of opt for the basic heroes more often. Like yep. they're not gonna settle for like decent heroes. They're gonna take risks, get better main deck cards, get a chance at better heroes, and usually their decks end up with like one, maybe even two basic heroes because of it. I think Debbie's probably like the most playable basic yes, hero personally. Uh, I guess if you ask different people, they have different opinion. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think Life Coach thinks Keith is the most playable basic hero. Which yeah, Life Coach loves Keith. Uh, that's a wow opinion, I think. But he's much smarter than me. Yep. So we're waiting for their next match to begin here. Yep. All right. They're taking a bathroom break. Yep. We'll, we'll wait for them. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what happened in that game in terms of like the why why was it such a dramatic victory for hyped? Obviously you you mentioned gold, mm -hmm. you got a lot of that, um, but it seemed like a lot of what hype uh, life coach had was really beefy, really tanky, hard to push through. How how did he end the game so quickly? I mean, I, it's that one key turn, right? You yeah, were... that one key turn, saving initiative at the right moment. I really love the play, saving the helm of the dominator, right? Yeah. I mean, he saw that coming. He was thinking an entire turn ahead, right? That's why he didn't helm of the dominator the creep in front of Sora. Like he was killing the Sven with the cleave. He needed that cleave, the creep there so that he could cleave and kill the Sven to enable that play to just knock Life Coach out of that lane. Yeah, I know when we're watching Artifact, there's a lot of to keep track of. Uh, yes. One thing that a lot of players, when they're playing the game, is they should be paying attention to how much gold that their opponent has. Exactly. So in Life Coach's position, when he see Hype go down 19 gold, mm -hmm. there's only a couple items in the game that actually is not 19. There's mm -hmm. Wingfall Hammer, which is pretty meh. There is the Helm of the Dominator and, of course, Vesture the Tyrant. Vesture. And, of course, you also have Open Deckless. So it really narrows down the, the possibility of what that 19 goal actually got spent onto. So um, I, I, I believe that Life Coach also knew that he had to play against a HOD. Yes. Uh, yes. But, you know, at the same time, like, even though you know it, you're up against the Helm of the Dominator, you still have to beat it somehow. Okay. So, anyways, it uh, looks like both players are actually taking a, a dinner break. 